Hello there, lovely soul. This is Infinity, and thank you so much for joining me. It is Sunday. Oh, wow. It's 11.11. 11. <laughs> I had no idea. It is 11.11 a.m. here on Sunday, the 21st of, um, I usually look at the time, but I really didn't. Uh, the 21st of February, so 2-21-2021. 11 o'clock or 11 11 i should say oh, now 11 12 so this is meant to be for me to join um come here for you guys to join me here so thank you for being guided to this video as you can see i already have cards out this is the archangel oracle uh deck by doreen virtue and i actually pulled these cards yesterday um I was kind of in a, what do I do? I had all these different kind of directions. I felt very kind of split in what I could be doing um, as far as different things. And so uh, all of a sudden it was like, oh, go to the Archangel Oracle. So that's what I did. And it was just a very impromptu thing. But after it came out and it developed the way that it did, I was prompted to share it uh, with you. And so I actually started a video yesterday, but it kind of got interrupted. And so I decided to do a new one today. So I did pull these cards yesterday on the 20th. It is the 21st today. Uh, we have the 222 portal tomorrow. It's the divine union portal. Very, very important. Connected with uh, the new moon on the 11th. It's exactly 11 days later. And it's, like I said, the divine union portal. It's for deeper connections with our soul, deeper connections, um, integrations with our um, with our soul and our, with our human aspect and, and just... Uh, strengthening and clearing that connection so it's um so you get clear guidance directly from your your soul and and aside from your soul and that divine union it's with your spirit guides with your guardian angel and angels and archangels and and animals or spirit animals and your ancestors and family um that have crossed over from this the friends and family from this life or and then the whole just everything and everyone that you can um, tap into when you clear out and ascend and clear and heal and ascend and do all this all this really deep um, energy work and and spirit work that needs to be done through our ascension it's understand it's about understanding ourselves and healing our body so we can clear energy um so we may rise and may and may go up so we have to do the work to get clear and clean and healthy and healed in the different ways and aspects that we are so we can uh move in the higher direction so it's like how far can you go with all this weight on you not so far but as you cut the weight the further you can go. And, and that really is what ascension is. And the further you can go, the higher you can rise, the higher dimensions can come into you with their frequencies because you can get to that place. And so um, anyway, that is what is going off the portal. Um, so we're going to get into a bit of of this with the messages from our archangels. And I did already pull a Hidden Worlds Oracle card um, as well. That's what I was guided to do yesterday. So that's the card that I got. We're gonna get into that. I'm not even gonna start talking about what that is yet um, until we get there, but you can see the picture. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, and if you don't know me, I am Infinity. I'm a psychic, physical empath, medical medium. A uh, soul guide. I work with people and animals. I'm a distance energy healer. I work worldwide uh, to help people clear and heal and connect spiritually so they can ascend and connect. It's called, uh, I have a program called Evolve Now that is a deep healing and spiritually connected um, program for you, your soul, and your guides. And then I just put out a new, uh, a, a couple new offerings called Renew Now. And I kind of look at it like if Evolve Now had a baby, this is what that would be. So a lot, uh, 
less intense in a lot of ways. So anyway, if you're interested in, in what I do and who I am, um, actually, I was very sick most of my life because I didn't know what I was. And I had so much energy trapped in my body that made me really chronically ill. I was disabled, diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and I was guided to heal myself and understand energy about for me and other people. So, uh, so anyway, take a look at my website. It's the healingbutterfly.org. And I do offer different several options for private reads. Okay, so let's get into it here. Um, first card up was you are safe with archangel michael and uh i am protecting you against lower level energies and guarding you your loved ones and home so uh i am extremely close with and work very directly with um, archangel michael i am an earth angel and so um michael has or is very connected to the work that I do and protecting me. And I have been under a lot of uh, threat and negative psychic um, attack over these last few months. And a lot of us have um, had to deal with that, especially those of us who help and heal and guide others. Uh, it's especially difficult. And going into this first part of, of the year, it has been a thing with us to try to get, try to trigger us, try to get us to lower our vibe and lower our frequency and really tap into those lower level um, hurts and pains and fears and all those things that, um, that really, you know, can mess us up and get us in fear of, of our lives, of our livelihoods, of our shelter, of our health, of all sorts sorts of stuff, um, really distract us from the work that we're trying to do and connecting with people to help them. And so if you're somebody that is a light worker, uh, if you're somebody who uh, is an empath, who's trying to ascend and doing work for yourself, uh, and it's been a difficult time for you, just know that there really is a spiritual war going on. You're trying to be of the light and there are things at play that try to, you know, get in our way that keep people from coming to us or keep us from going to people, playing on our fears and, you know, creating havoc with other people so we can be distracted. I actually have an ebook called uh, The Light, the Dark, the Spiritual War and Your Energy. So there's way more about that. Um, unfortunately, it is real. I wish it wasn't. And I wish that you could actually just be like, oh, I'm not going to pay attention to anything dark. I'm of the light and that doesn't exist. Um, I don't know. Last time you looked, the world did have evil and darkness in it. So you can't just wish that away. And deciding that it can't come and affect you is like sticking your head in the ground because you're not you're you're completely defenseless when you act like that doesn't exist. So you have to be aware of the things in our world and, and universe that do try to oppose us and we have to persevere. So it's not about letting it overtake us. It's about seeing it for what it is and acting accordingly. And that's why it's so important to be connected with your soul and your guides. So you can get that support from them and direction from them and, and understanding from them. And they can help you out in different ways. So you're not just in a tor tornado by yourself, not understanding what's going on. Um, like a lot of people are. Okay, next, remember who you are. Again, with Archangel Michael. So yes, these cards came out one and then the other. Like I said, I'm very, very close with Michael. Um, you are powerful, loving, and creative child of God. You are very loved. <sighs> So, of course, he says, yeah, there is definitely there's definitely things that are that are trying to oppose you. This is why we're keeping you safe. I am protecting you against lower energies and guarding you and your loved ones and home. He doesn't say that it doesn't exist. <laughs> he says, I'm I'm guarding you. And so let the let the the stress go to me. 
and don't let it come to you, which is exactly what those energies want to do is infiltrate you. So let me take care of it. I, I, you don't have to worry about that. And, and remember who you are. This is why this is happening. It's because you are a light body, a light worker, somebody who's so powerful and so loved and so protected that you're a threat, period. And understand that the more and better you understand that you're a threat to um, the, the status quo, to the material matrix, that because you're on board with the, even if you don't know a whole lot about what the abundance matrix is, it's basically the, the, uh, the crystalline grid within Gaia that also reflects etherically around her body that we can tap into that takes us to a way level, um, higher level of consciousness because we're tapped in with the with that crystalline, uh, with that embedded crystalline layer that she that she has. You know, when I talk about, I mean, crystals, little literally beds of crystals, and those get charged with divine information, not only from her, but from our cosmos, from all sorts of places that we can tap into so we can raise our consciousness. But for so long and, and for many, many millennia, that abundance matrix was basically um, infiltrated, I guess you could say, with, with the material matrix where things and paradigms came into play to distract humanity from the truth of who they are, their spirituality, what, um, who and what exactly P, uh, ascended masters are and angels and archangels, really twisting a lot of things around, uh, a lot of truths around into stories that are actually not real, and, um, and then putting into play uh, things like, you know, hardcore addictions, um, materialism, uh, lower level technology that really, really uh, get people addicted and distract them and all that stuff. So, uh, but with the changing of the energies and going um, into the Aquarian age, we are, uh, Gaia was able to remove layers of the material matrix and more of us came online to pull in energies and to ascend and awaken and help others awaken so we could really tap in and with these very important portals like the one tomorrow the 222 the divine union portal really taps into the abundance matrix because that what the abundance matrix means is the abundance of light into our bodies the abundance of of life force that we have so we can manifest so we can connect so so the mission so the actual what is supposed to happen happens so we get activated to remember our souls and our and ourselves really hear our, our own soul song and frequency be able to send that out to the rest of humanity and our soul family and uh and be able to connect first on it on an etheric and then energetic and then a physical level. So that's what's happening. Um, that's what we've been going towards. So the pandemic was, uh, that was a whole lot of restructuring and deconstruction and, and things blowing up and people having to really, you know, people tapping in in different ways spiritually because so much got rocked. Um, so there's that. And then because of all of that, these first or last few months of December and then first few months of uh, I mean, of last few months of 2020 and first few months of 2021 is still about trying to like hold us back. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you know, somebody popping your tire before you're supposed to get on an airplane. So you can't go to do what you're supposed to do, you know, like, like real sabotage kind of, kind of thing. And um, so anyway, we have to recognize that these that there are these things we can tap into that there are these things that try to hold us back that you know if things are are moving in a certain way uh that there are things at play and times at play we had the next card up moon cycles with archangel haniel and she says notice how the moon affects your energy and why can't I get this and manifestations and capital capitalize 
upon, upon these cycles. So notice how the moon affects your energy and manifestations and capitalize upon these cycles. So really uh, doing specific meditations for the new moon and the full moon and even the half moon, if that comes up, I personally love half moon time uh, very much. Uh, it's just so balanced in the energy. Uh, but yeah, really paying attention and, and especially if you're a female, uh, with your, with your menstrual cycles, just pay attention as you're ascending. How does your, how does your moon, uh, how does the moon correspond with your periods? Are you getting your periods around the new moon or the full moon? What do those mean? Cause they do mean different things. Mine would, would switch from, uh, it's really interesting the way that it goes with the portals and the stargates and the moons and which moons are, is here or there. And, and it just, and it just fluctuates. Um, so anyway, moon cycles are very, very important to pay attention to and, um, and also tap in with Gaia at that time. Um, and, and Lilith also, because she, she is like Gaia's sister at night, this whole energy that comes through, um, with this, with this different type of, just very different type of energy with, um, uh, with Gaia's, Gaia's other half, if you will, her, she's the day, Lilith is the night, and, um, and so, the the secrets of how do you put that like the secrets of our time like uh, the way that we feel differently at night than we do during the day the way when you go out into nature the things that you feel and see and and tap into and and um and even can perceive at night is different than during the day and so that's important too uh, and then next, um, and that was with Haniel. So we have Michael, Michael, and then Haniel, Archangel Haniel, and with moon cycles. And then we have divine order with Raguel. Everything is how it needs to be right now. Look past the illusion and see the underlying order. I always feel really good when this card shows up. Um, just because, and especially if, if there are kind of things going on, it's chaotic, uh, just because it's like, no, you know, just recognize and remember that we definitely, there's a bigger plan and we don't always, we can't see all of the angles. We, we, we just need to know that there are other things at play. Like we can, our perspective is lower than the whole you know, puzzle of what is going on with us. So we need to recognize that there is divine order that even if things feel and seem like they're not great for us, that, you know, that just might work out because of something else that's going to take place that shape it better. We just don't know. And so we just have to, you know, stress and worry doesn't help. And, but, you know, our human aspects, we get scared, we get frightened when certain things happen. So we need to remember that there is divine order to what's going on, um, that these cycles, and this is not only this, and she's saying, I'm not only talking about moon cycles here, we're, we're talking specifically also about the portal. So just cycles, so like cosmic cycles is what kind of, she's coming in to say this is this reading was just kind of like feeling the energies of this portal and what am i supposed to do with that and so these are the cards that came out and it was like this is very multi-layered it's just like cosmic cycles the portal you have to understand that that there are things happening within the portal and you just have to take one step in front of the other to get yourself there at the highest vibration possible and not let things, you know, fuck with your mental state. Basically don't let energies that 
either you have no control over or aren't about you or you know, things like that stand in the way of your progress and the cycles that are coming anyway. So, you know, be in that. She's showing me the triangle of doves. Like, just try to see yourself in, in this space. Um, and, and you do hold the power to control your space here. We just have to remember that there's so many different things at play, but we have to stay in that space. Okay, next up, Claire Sentience with Raguel again. And we have, he says, notice your recurring physical and emotional feelings as they are divine guidance. So notice your recurring physical and emotional feelings as they are, as they signify divine guidance. And as light workers, we're empaths, and empaths feel so much more than regular people. And during these portals and everything, we are going to be feeling so much more. So this is just saying, number one, pay attention. But number two, know that your clairsentience, your empathic ways of processing energy is definitely uh, going to get an uptick. So if you're feeling more sensitive, if all of a sudden your body starts hurting more and you're achy in your joints, in your upper back where your shoulder blades are, if you have headaches, if your chest is tight, um, if you get, get really tired or people really wear you out, you know, any of this stuff more than the usual that um, this is about the... Um, the leveling up of your sensitivities. So, you know, there's a balance to how this all works. And again, Raguel saying, you see those scales, you have to balance. So there is divine order. There is what's, what, you know, may try to oppose you. There is the, just what's around. There is the cosmic cycles. There is all of that. And what's important to do is to pay attention to how all of that affects you and to do everything that you can to keep yourself as energetically balanced as you can, as energetically balanced as you can be. So do whatever healing meditations um, you can possibly do. I just put out um, four awesome. Now I channel my meditations, so I can say that they're awesome and amazing because I don't think them up. They're what get channeled to me and I put them out and they're self-healing meditations. The first of four was the new moon, um, a ton of activations and integrations in that one. And then it was, um, uh, clearing abundance box and healing the money wound. Then it was loving your body and connecting with your, uh, guardian angel. And then it was healing the, the relationship with and into reintegrating, rebirthing your inner child. So that was very, very, these, all of these, uh, meditations aside from cord cutting, cord cutting being extremely important to do for yourself when you, um, uh, it's just, it's just, a, it's been such a theme in 2021. Like literally any of my, my clients or potential clients coming to me, they've been guided to, uh, work on, on doing their, their life review, life inventory, figuring out where they need to cord, cut cords and going through that motion, even before we get into the deeper healing. So they can do some, some preliminating self-healing first to bring back that energy into, into their bodies, like we were talking about earlier. So, uh, so anyway, part of all of that is this, it's all tapped into the physical, the energetic, notice your physical and emotional feelings. That's all energy. It's saying, look, you feel a certain way or your body feels a certain way for reasons. There's always a reason. If you're in pain, if you're uncomfortable, if your head hurts, if your back hurts, if your chest hurts, if your feet or hands hurt, there's reasons for this. If you have a hard time digesting, if you're, you know, fatigued all the time, if you get nauseous easily, there's a reason for all of these things. By the way, I have an ebook called uh, The Essential Empath Guide 
So if you are an empath, please check it out. Or if you're like, what's this empath stuff? Or maybe that's me. I, I do tend to have fluctuating feelings in my bodies and pains and this and that. Maybe you have fibromyalgia. Um, and if you do, I guarantee you it's, and it's an energy problem. And if that's your case, I can definitely help you with that. Um, so anyway, please, please, please work on your energy there because it is definitely a thing. And with um, Archangel Ariel, courage, be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. So, and look at those lions back there. So tapping in with that, with the fierceness of the lions and, um, and her, <laughs> she's so fierce in this picture. Uh, courage. And when I saw this card, I immediately thought of the fool card in, um, in the tarot, but especially in the light workers tarot. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do that thing where I try to find a tarot card. And of course, it might <laughs> be impossible to find because that's just kind of the way it goes when you're trying to find a tarot card. Um, one of those things like the same card will pop and pop and pop but then if you want a certain card you won't find it <laughs> let's see if i can get to it I can, i'm gonna do one other pass here don't see it there whoops don't see it there ah there it is found it this for the front. Sweet. The fool. So I just love this card because I mean, she's just trusting, surrendering. She has courage. It really takes courage to just let go and surrender and fall into um, faith and trust and, um, and to be the, and to be the fool that, that first step, this is the zero card. This is, um, the, the ever looping infinite. This is like the zero is the true infinity. Um, because it is just, it's one circle. It's just all you, um, starting and and ending in the same in the same breath and piece of energy infinitely always 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 and forever and so here it tells this full card tells us um to be courageous have courage and this also stand up for your beliefs mean more if anything internally to have the courage to believe what is going on in your life, to believe that you are magical and special in this divine being of, of the universe that was put here for a very important purpose in this life. And that um, your, your existence is very important to the collective. And, and it does take courage to go through this ascension process and it does take a lot of faith and it does take a lot of going into the unknown and not understanding stuff but but you are safe remember who you are it is all divine order and and if you do if you allow yourself to believe the in the magic of what uh, is happening and believe that you can, um, completely change your life. Trust me, that is possible. Trust me, that is possible. My life is a hundred, it just a hundred percent different than, than it was the first 45 years of my, or 40 years of my life. Um, these last eight to 10, especially five, four, three, two, one, zero years are very, very different than before. And I just had to do this over and over. You don't do this just once. You don't just fall backwards into 
into the hands and, and arms of Gaia and the universe, just back first. Uh, but, you know, she is holding a crystal. So she's, and there's all that energy. She is connected. I love that she has this stick here, um, you know, holding on to, there's, there's a piece there of like saying, I'm not letting go of everything that I know. This is representing that stick here, very earthly, very um, ordinary, if you will. Uh, but the crystal, whoop, the crystal representing magic and the other world and your crystalline DNA and your light body and having faith and connecting with Gaia and connecting with magic. It's an amethyst for a reason, um, an extremely powerful uh, crystal for tapping into your soul, your magic, your, uh, your, your divinity. It's the crystal that Merlin always goes back to and works with, with me and healings. Um, we've embedded it into our crown chakras to really amplify those energies. And so it's no surprise to me that this full card has this beautiful amethyst, um, in it depicted here. Okay. Moving on last of the archangel cards archangel gabriel as you nurture a child you nurture your inner child uh you your inner child both activities are important for you right now why there's this big <laughs> gap right here i have no idea it's really odd um but anyway archangel gabriel and again um i'm deeply connected with um Archangel Gabriel, one of the aspects of the angels that um, that have integrated with me, and um, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so this card coming out last is to remind me again of who I am, what I am, what I'm, what I'm here to do. Um, and again, I said Michael and and I work very closely together. And I am an, an earth angel. And so as an as as being what I am and, and being connected with with this Gabriel energy more than anything, um, this is just very much to, to it's come in to remind me personally, but more than that, for everybody else, it's just what how do we pay attention to our to our as you nurture a child, you nurture your own inner child. So again, I told you that I did, I was guided to do that meditation was the last one in that set of, um, of healing. And it was about the, the child, the in integrating of, of the child. And, uh, and that's literally like taking the baby, taking the child and putting it inside of you and saying, I'm going to take care of you. And that means also keeping yourself in check because a good parent doesn't instill a lot of fear and allow their babies to feel fear um, and, and takes care and just shows, you know, uh, courageousness. And so to take care of our inner child, we need to have faith and not allow ourselves to, to get into fear, to feel chaos, to to you know be so distracted where we're not listening and paying attention to the messages coming to us through our bodies because that's the only way it gets to us right is through our bodies even our psychic abilities are dictated by our physicality our energetic bodies in our physical bodies because if they're not if our physical body and our energetic body is all out of whack or in pain and addicted or in you know stressed and in survival mode all the time it's very very hard, nearly impossible to get clear guidance. So you need to be healthy to be and, and nurtured and loved from yourself first and foremost, before you can um, really be be a healthy person and and ascend. So all of these things are are connected when it comes to our health, our wellness, our abilities as a healer or a guide or a psychic or a card reader. Um, if you do Reiki, if, you know, anything that you, that you may do. 
gosh. So anyway, and also um, any children that you have in your life that you spend time with, just really try to tap in with them, get into, you know, what is going on with them, ask them questions, um, do art with them, go out into nature with them, talk about magical things and ask them, you know, how they feel about fairies and angels and, and, um, and nature in general, and just, you know, whatever may come, but just tap in with them, keep their wonderment alive for, for forever. Um, that's really our responsibility as um, adults, as light workers in this time. And lastly, the card that came up in the Hidden Worlds Oracle was the Mother Awakens, compassion, nurture, and guidance. And for this, I'm going to read directly from the book. And it's card number three. And here we go, pages 40 and 41. And 41 or 14, uh, 144 has been a theme. Uh, and and so anyway, so it was just very interesting to have these pages with the with the third with the three card, the mother awakens card. And um, so here we go. Compassion, nurture, guidance. You are being given the opportunity to feel the pure love. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this. You can kind of tap in here. To feel the pure love and compassion of the mother through the connection to her heart through the rainbow. The rainbow energy is profound. It speaks of hope and healing through each of the energetic centers within the body and seven rays of light. We all need to become our best selves. And the sense that you are being chosen by the mother at this time to awaken to her and your own capacity to open the door that lies between the worlds. And... Um, okay, continuing. You, you are uh, walking this rainbow path and can be called home to the mother. You're walking this rainbow path and can be called to the mother. This can sometimes reveal the path to the other life and a return to the mother in that sense. But this is truly more than a return to the memories of a time when the mother sends out her healing heart light in the form of rainbows to all who need her support and her guidance. You're returning to her. And while the father is present, as you can see, he's right here. And oops, that's my page. And while the father is present, he is less activated for you at present. Be in her presence and know it makes no difference to her who you are or what judgments you may have laid at your feet or the way in which culture seeks to label and define us. To her, you are pure and perfect and whole and finally deserving of all. Uh, and fully deserving of all of her love. You exist and you are her child and she will guide you now and embrace you with her loving heart energy. Your own heart will open and respond in return and judgments will fall away to be replaced with compassion, understanding, and the true belief of your own worth. Illumination. You are worthy of this compassionate mother love. Let her heal all mother wounds and show you how precious you are. Oh gosh, that gets me emotional. This, <laughs> if you watch my videos, you know, if I get to this, <laughs> I can get emotional with this, with this Oracle um, deck. But so getting this, this card with this reading at this time, um, and when I read that, I got to tell you, you know, it's like, let go, just know you'll feel this sense of, of love and, and just being able to, to have this feeling. 
And so this moves me on to letting you know that I'm going to be putting out the next meditation. And I haven't put out a meditation like five or six days because I haven't been guided to. I do what I do when I'm guided to do it. And that's just what I do. And, um, and so it was, I thought they were going to be daily, but then my guides were like, no, we need to we need to hold off because people are still making their way to the met, to those four meditations and they need to catch up and integrate and all that. So, um, you know, just do these other things. Plus I was very busy. I had a, um, I had healings this week or, and I just, you know, I, I mean, I could have done them, but I was just guided not to. So, um, and then I, um, I've been guided to work on, on the next meditation being about uh, overcoming and healing fear and shame and guilt and all of, all of that good stuff. And this card coming in um, and this feeling with the fool, uh, is definitely, and all of these cards uh, is definitely like what I was waiting for to kind of tie things together of how that should go with this meditation or how I just should be thinking about it. I don't, like I said, I don't design the meditations. They're channeled to me. It was the, the um, inspiration came from somebody that I work with who is, uh, his name is Gareth Hudson and he has a channel called Gareth Hudson Tarot. He's a tarot reader. Uh, he was guided to me a couple months ago and, um, and so we've just been connected in, in working with, you know, how we, how we do things and doing energy work and all sorts of stuff. So, Anyway, he said, how about that? And, and I was like, he goes, it just popped to me. And, and I think that would be a meditation for you to do. And, and I was like, oh, and this is a, in that in between time within these last few days, um, I was also working on, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, the renew now on uh, my new offering that channeling came to me what I would be offering with those services. So I was working on that and getting it all up on my website. So, um, so that took precedence and then it was just waiting and then getting this card and this reading, like I said, has really been the catalyst for me going, oh, okay, now I feel into that, into that energy, because of course it's a great, uh, it's another point to take care of. Um, our fear, our anxieties, um, unworthiness or feelings of guilt or being abandoned or any of that stuff. She talks about healing the, mo the mother wound, being, um, feeling worthy and connecting with that rainbow light that she can send to us to help us calibrate our chakras and connecting ground with her. And in, in my healings and in my meditations and like a hundred percent of what I do is connected with the mother, with Gaia. So if you were to go through my meditations, through looking at what I offer for healing, um, she is a central part of that. Um, in fact, the whole first phase of my Evolve Now program deals with working directly with Mother Gaia and her helping you to heal all of your chakras. So this is a very meaningful card for me um, and just for what I do for people, my own connection with her and her coming through to say, let's do this healing for the fear, for the, for the guilt, for the shame, for, for all that, including imposter syndrome, she said, including imposter syndrome, she said, because a lot of people as they're ascending and they're becoming something different, they're being guided to the spiritual, the metaphysical, the, um, the occult, the, the, the things that are off the mainstream and all of a sudden they're being pushed into, you know, getting into stuff and knowing things and just feeling stuff and, and being more clear sentient, really tapping into their, to their um, empathic ways. 
she's like, a lot of people have this, like, this isn't me. What am I doing? Am I trying to be something else? Am I going through a crisis? Am I going crazy? Or if they're getting into um, feeling more about remembering who they are, uh, there's still times where they're like, you know, I'm an imposter. I don't know what I'm doing because, you know, it's, it's hard to be clear all the time. So you have these moments of, I don't know what I, I don't know what's going on. Um, and so that can tend to, and even if, even if it's not about spirituality and if it's about other stuff, just generally feeling like I'm just acting my way through life. I know a lot of people can, you know, have that problem or deal with, you know, success in a, in a difficult way because they don't feel like they deserve it. It's why them, it's this imposter thing that they're dealing with. And so that all ties in with this. So the, so the meditation I'm going to be putting out, I'm going to be doing it as soon as I'm guided to um, between today and I want to, I really hope that it, that I'm guided to do it to today, the 21st, so it'll be up and ready for you guys on the 22nd. And I don't know, I may even go live tomorrow. So heads up on that for a live uh, uh, Oracle and tarot reading and meditation, if I'm so guided those have been kind of last minute, if that is the case. So anyway, that is, those are the readings and those are the energies and a lookout for this meditation coming to, in, to work with Gaia, to release those negative energies. And I don't know exactly what we're going to get into there. I just, sometimes I'll know the theme of things. Um, and then I'll be guided to a time and, and to get into that other world space, connect with Gaia and be, um, taken on our way through the astral guided meditation. So it's like, it's projected to me and then I process it and project it to you. And we all go on a ride together and travel. So anyway, um, I hope you joined me for that. Um, so take, keep a lookout for that. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell so, you're, so you get notified of that um, video coming out. And um, until then, please check out the other meditations. Uh, that are available. Like I told you, the the new moon one, very, very much relevant. Please, 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 if you haven't yet, please watch that one and please do that one. So much, so, so much goes on there. So much integrating and clearing and healing. Then the next one is the abundance with the money wound. Then the next one is the body love with connecting with your guardian angel, which if you do that, oh my gosh, so much better clarity comes through because trust me, you've had, you've had your guardian angels. You have, you have three, you're, you're right there. Guardian angel that's with you all the time, your miracle and your healing angels that kind of keep the perimeter, but, but your guardian angel, that one that's literally been with you since before you were born is always with you and knows you and feels you so well, and is always guiding you, whether you know it or not, whether you felt that or not, they've been there. So it's a, it's just so beautiful to tap in with them, be able to have this relationship, constant contact, talking to them all the time. But once you um, really open up the door and allow and really tap in with them, which this meditation will help you with, oh, I, I guarantee you, you'll love it. Okay, and then the next one after that was the child, integrating with and healing the, the inner child, really taking responsibility for your inner child and tapping in with that wonderment and pureness and divine richness of the babies. And we were that once. So we can, we can tap into that and, and go there again. All right. With that said, thank you so much for being here. I love you all so much. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget the key is to create. I love you already and always live in, live in love. Bye for now, guys. Peace out.